Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Just Slap Podcast here, your host, Steven and Alex. And today, we have an absolute banger for you guys. We had the distinct pleasure of sitting down with Juanjo Clement, who is currently Max Cressy's head coach and the co-founder of Tap Mindset. For the people that don't know, Tap Mindset is a revolutionary training program that is democratizing mental training for all athletes all over the world. Before we get into the podcast, guys, huge thank you to Juanjo for his time. If you haven't already, click that like button, hit the subscribe button, click it. and enjoy the podcast. All right, Juanjo, what's going on, man? Thanks for, thanks for coming on the podcast. Well, you're more welcome. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you guys. I, I tell you, this has been a long time coming. So we had Alexei Nesterov on the podcast. You are currently coaching um, Losha, who's one of my closest friends. Uh, and ever since that podcast, we've been dying to have you on. Yeah. We've literally been like, we have to have Juanjo on because he's told us so much about you. That, that's why That's why you received about 145 messages from Alex. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, no, we're trying no. really hard. We're trying really hard with this. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but finally, finally we make it work, guys. Yeah. No, but um, no, but seriously, thank you so much for coming on. I Listen, there's, there's a million places that we can start. Um, and, but you know, I think where we want to start is we want to start on what you're currently, one of the, one of the many things that you're currently working on, yep. uh, and that is your relationship with Max Cressy. Um, now you guys have been, you've known each other for a while now, if I'm not mistaken, you started with Max before college. If, if is that correct? Am yep. I right to say that? Yeah. Can you talk about just how that relationship started? Uh, because the growth that you guys have seen together has been absolutely immense. So I'm, I'm, I would love to hear the story there. Oof. The, star, um, the relationship is starting in the, in the first year that he came to the States. He came to Wild Tennis Academy. I think he did the, his last year of high school with us. Um, by uh, that time, it was my first year here in the States. And I was working as a tennis coach and as a fitness trainer because my major is sports science. So I was doing a lot of fitness preparation for the kids as well with the fitness director uh, by the time in the academy. And that's how we started working and uh, knowing each other. Um, I was especially working with him in the fitness area. Um, tennis area, it was led by Mohamed Badan and uh, two more coaches, Pedro Artan Martia, we were working really close with Max. And yeah, everything started there. Everything started there, and I mean, with Max, just first day, I remember first day, uh, I got to, to know him, uh, the kids uh, in the academy start training at 1.15 after school, and this guy was showing up already at 12.45, doing his preparation for the practice, uh, that really surprised me because I never seen that before for any player, uh, even back in the time when I was uh, working in Germany. Um, yeah, they start seeing things that I never seen in players before, and that they finally attract me. In order, you know, to to helping, and uh, we start communicating, talking more, uh, working uh, extra hours before and after training, especially in the fitness part. And and then after he graduated in the academy, he ended up going to UCLA. We lost a little bit of contact, and then I think in his second year, no, third year, I think in UCLA. We start connecting again and um, yeah, I mean, yeah, everything has started there. So I've heard this actually my first year of college because uh, we have a, a teammate, Max Green. He, he plays, he's from California. And so he kind of has known Max Cressy through, through just being in California. And one of the stories that I remember hearing is that Max has always been a person of like, who has visualized this goal of being you know, a top, top tennis player. And, you know, when he started, I think that, you know, he obviously, he, when he joined UCLA, he wasn't even in the lineup, right? Um, so, but it's just funny to me that that's the case with Max because learning about all that you do with tap and visualization, meditation, all these different things, which we're going to get into that um, later in the podcast, but it's such, it's so interesting to me how that relationship, like it's, it's almost like a perfect match. You know, that's the, the way from an outside perspective. Um, was there that initial immediate click? Like, did you just know, like, we're on the same wavelength here? Like, we, we have the same goals. We, we like to practice the same way. Did, was that really felt when you first met? I and mean, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, I think for a player, you needs to have as well the, 
the willing, you know, the willing to learn and the and the drive, you know, to improve. And he has always had that, and he still has. Um, yeah, and, um, for me, one of the as, as as you know, guys, as well. For me, one of the most important elements in, in any sport discipline is the way you handle your mind and, and how how you can find ways to improve your your mental state through through your sport discipline. And and he he really buy into it and. He was doing things as well by himself before I, I, I met him, but we really started digging. And he's been always speaking with those topics, so it was really easy for me actually to, to try things and, and not only to try things to share. At the end of the day, it's a it's a it's a war between two people, you know. Uh, as a coach, uh, it's really important as well to listen and, and as well to to listen ideas for for the players and. Yeah, he, he had really good ideas and he has been always big on, on those visualizations and meditations. Yeah, we were been doing a bunch of things, a bunch of things, especially, especially um, UCLA that uh, he went through a couple of years, uh, the things were not uh, that easy as it looks. We really dig, uh, we really dig deep, really dig deep uh, of the core, implementing routines to really empower Max and find ways to know himself better. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and to, I mean, it's kind of crazy, like to go from like not being able to like, to be on, in the lineup from UCLA to now being ranked like 40 in the world or whatever he's ranked right now. It's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it, it, it's, it's really like, it's really crazy, especially from people that like, like if you're like a college tennis player, you know, like how, like how crazy that is. Like just going from not in the lineup to in the lineup is like a giant step yeah. to go from not in the lineup to, to 40 in the world is crazy. So like, to, just to just to quickly touch on it, like what? So how has the progress been so far? Because I know you guys have had crazy results, but like so far for this year, how's the progress been? And and what are some of the the goals that you and the team have uh, uh, for for you know for this season and the, and the next season to come? Well, this is the first year actually. I I'm full full time with Max in the tour. I travel before uh, with him. A lot of challengers and futures where he used to play as well. And last year, I think, uh, is last summer in UCLA, we start traveling a little bit. Um, so I've been with him in the tour, but this is the first year actually I'm fully uh, uh, with him. And for one of the main, main goals this year is actually to build a structure for Max. Uh, we're trying to build a, a thing around him, uh, um, a physio, uh, a tennis coach, uh, uh, mental tennis coach. This is the the part I'm assuming in the in the team. Um, as a team, that's our main goal. Number one, giving them the structure in order to keep evolving and keep improving as a tennis player. And um, with Max, uh, the goal is always uh, to be number one. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. That's the goal. Is try to be his best version. Uh, is try to go every single tournament and try to do the best. Um, we are not big in putting goals in ranking ways. We know what we want to get, it's clear. But we are trying to, right now that we have a new structure and we are trying to get to know each other, we are going week by week and we are going day by day. That's our main goal right now. We're trying to get better every day in any way possible, any, any aspect of the game. And it's been so far a really, really, really nice project, really nice process as well. Um, Actually, we're going to meet, uh, the first time that we meet uh, the full thing, it was in Dubai a couple of weeks ago. We mm -hmm. have a great week. So things, it takes time to develop that new confidence between each other with all the members of the teams. But uh, yeah, that's the main goal. The structure around Max, have the people that he can trust and, uh, he, and as well, he can deposit the confidence when things are going well and things are not going well. And yeah, it's... It's just to get better and improve every single week. I mean, you're competing with the best players in the world, so things are things at the end of the day are not going to be easy, mm -hmm. and that's what you want. So, so yeah. How how are you liking being full time with Max now? Like traveling, being a full time pro tour coach. I mean, because that that in itself is a beast. You know what I mean? Like it's it's I can only imagine how demanding it is to to travel around to also you know be essentially exclusively with one player. Right? What's what's that like been for you? I mean, I know Max for a long time, so I think the transition for me has been has been uh, normal, normal, and just trying to give normality. I think this is really important. And uh, I think I'm working with a person, I'm working with a tennis player. Yeah. 
that he's trying to do his best, and I see it from that perspective. Um, uh, one of the, the, the hardest thing maybe is, um, you know, especially the traveling. Uh, the traveling has been, uh, and you don't stop. It's, uh, it's non-stopping, and as well sometimes, you know, to to really try to, you know, to make things equals as well with my job in the academy, yeah. uh, with my kids as well here uh, in California. But that's been great. It's been great, but normality. That that brings me to another question. So we've kind of we've asked players before, sort of what's the difference between kind of grinding it out on the futures tour and the challengers tour, and then going to play some of the bigger uh, ATP events where you're seeing guys like Rafa and Raj next to you. Uh, but we've never asked a coach. So from a coaching perspective, how like does it does it do you have to kind of tell your mind to kind of like okay like let's let's just focus or um, or is it just like you know business as usual you know what I mean it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really affect you anyway. I mean it's a different environment. Um, I think whenever you go to a new environment, you need to adapt to it. And I think it's the perspective of how you how you want to see things and how you decide to see things. You know. Uh, and at the end of the day, you're the same tennis player. You're, you are still doing what you are supposed to do, and you're playing with the best. And that narrative, you can take it in, in different ways. You can use it as, you can take it as, wow, you know, uh, you are, you know, delight to be here, and that's amazing. Oh, okay, I'm happy to be here. I've been working for this goal my entire life, and well, that's it. I need to keep going, you know. I, I need to keep doing my job. I think it's, it's the perspective on how you see things. That's really important. How do you reframe the situation? I think it's crucial. And of course, the first time, well, well you see people, a place that you've been seeing in TV for a long time, but then you just, you think what you have to do and, and focus on your business and that's it. But the, the final, I mean, and being in futures and challenges and the whole, I mean, you know, the whole environment is completely different. Everything is more professional. Uh, the facilities are, are amazing. Uh, uh, there is a change, of course, there is a change. Uh, but I think it's, it's just the way you see things is crucial. I think it's really important. And how you want to see things. One, one thing that I'm actually very curious about, and just having gotten to know you over the last like couple of months, I mean, we've had several phone calls and, and just everything that Losha said about you. You know, you seem like you're someone who's very observational and is a very good learner and, and, and is always looking to improve and, and to grow. Um, and one thing that I'm curious about is having, you know, being at these tournaments, going from, let's say, Challenger Future Tour to then going to ATP, you know, Masters tournaments and, and Grand Slams. What have you learned from, from the top players and from the you know, coaches of these top players? What have you observed that they are doing differently to, let's say, maybe lower level tennis players? I mean, they are professionals. You know, they, they are there to perform. And attention to details it's, it's something that you, you see at that level every day. You know, the way they prepare, not only for a match, just for a practice. It's it's something that uh, that uh, you just see, you know, where you are and what they are looking for, and it's just it, it, the way they take care of the body is something that impressed me a lot, you know, and um, that's something that uh, when I step uh, the first time into this new environment, like really wow, it's just for a practice of one hour, thirty minutes, the preparation going into that practice. Not only the physical, the physical preparation, but because it's the one that you see, but as well the mental preparation around all those things. That's something that that uh, that really, really, wow, well, you know. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's then uh, it's, 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 I think it's they are they're tennis players. Um, one as well, I think one of the they are really strong physically. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you that they are. They are really strong. Physically, it's something that you see the legs of those guys and the, the, the way they work in the gym, it's wow. You know, and, and people think that that's, this is natural, you know? People used to think as well that, wow, well, Roger is a natural talent. No, no, I mean, you, they work, they work pretty hard. And you can see, you know, you, when we go to a, a session with Max in the gym, you see those guys working. You see those guys working and you see those guys putting reps. And that's something that, that they, 
it's something that maybe you don't think that is happening off camera, but it's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably those things at the end of the day, the funny, the preparation, they take it to an, to another level. They take it to another level. And, and actually, we've been doing that uh, with Max, something that we've been doing a lot from even from futures and, and challengers when he was traveling with me and, and with Andrew Maguire, one of the, the, the guys that helped a lot as well, Max, through UCLA. Um, he says, we're trying to do everything that is in our control in the best way possible, you know, and, and we've been doing those preparations as well before our practices. And in that way, learning from the from the people is already there. That's one of the things actually we are we're doing. I remember our first US Open, and we went there. I think he got the wildcard to play uh, doubles with uh, King and Smith. They won the NCAA, and we played qualies. And I was there with Max. We were by ourselves, and we actually we were sitting down and observing it's looking you know and looking and learning and yeah i think this is really important at the end mm -hmm. and 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 so i want to ask you to kind of go deeply into what tap is and, and how you're you, you're using that with with the players that you're coaching but um i guess more broadly you know how much does you know meditating and visualizing these moments before players actually go to play that wild card match or go to play qualities or whatever the case may be in some of these bigger tournaments how much how much of that how much visualization have they done before they actually go on to step onto that court well, i'm gonna talk i'm gonna talk about max how much he, he does and how much other players i don't know but max uh, he visualizes every day um, and visualization at the end of the day what you're doing when you're visualizing you are you're thinking in a certain way and you're seeing yourself acting in a certain way. So basically you're putting repetitions in the, in the way you, you will desire to actually to behave in the court. Um, it, it, you need to be consistent. You know, uh, it's something I repeat a lot to my kids here in the academy. It's, <clears throat> it's like uh, you want to improve your forehand and you're switching something technical in your forehand. At the end of the day, you step on the court and you put repetitions. The same thing happened with the mental work. Mm. You know, and you're going to be consistent. You're going to be consistent and you have to do it, especially when you don't feel like it. That's the key point, you know, and because, again, you're on the court, you're switching your forehand, you, you kind of feel it. You, you kind of feel it, what are you doing? And your coach is telling you, I don't know, to bring, don't bring the elbow too high and you're working on that. And you feel it, you know, and the mental reps, you don't feel it right away. <clears throat> and you're going to be consistent. You're going to be consistent. And you're going to visualize what is good for you. Because everyone is different, uh, but with Max, we do it every day. He does it uh, as part of his morning routine. Is he visualizes every day, every every day. It's funny that you mention how you're visualizing the way you want to be on court, and what this reminds me of is it's so funny because I feel like Max specifically in college and in futures and in challengers, he was like the he was you know rowdy. Like he was loud, he was in your face, he was aggressive. I mean, he was like, you know, so, so much of what college tennis is about. And now if you look at how he's progressed as he's gotten, you know, broke into the top hundred, as he's playing these bigger level tournaments, it seems like he's calmed yeah. down a lot and he's a lot more Zen and he's a lot more, you know, uh, there seems to be a, a, a larger calmness. How much of a role did, did you play in that? Did you, is that something that you discussed with him and, is that something where you were like, okay, we need to kind of move towards this direction? And if that is the case, why? I mean, we're, it's a process that he discovered by himself, you know. At the end of the day, I've been there, is, you know, to, to, to help in any way possible. But it's something at the end that the player discovered by himself, talking through, through, his, through his team, you know, and the people that he really trusts on. At the end of the day, you need to understand a little bit the, the Maxine's game, you know. Maxine's game, you need to be really precise. It's, pretty, it's a pretty demanding game. Mm -hmm. It's a sprint. He's sprinting every single every single point to the net. Like it's pretty demanding physically, and the people doesn't think about that sometimes. I think um, you need to channel your energy, not only your your mental energy, your physical energy. Um, as you said, college is a completely different environment. I didn't play college. I didn't have the opportunity to play college, but I work with kids that our main goal is to try to provide them a scholarship. So we have been watching UCLA. Now the Pac-12 term is coming here, so when I see it, and you see the environment, the, the, the loud, the, the scream. It's tennis, but 
in a different way. And, and, that, and, and again, you, you are not, of course, you play for yourself, but you're playing for your team. So in profession, at a professional level, that's, that's different. It's completely different, you know. You don't have your five teammates playing next to you. Um, the way they send you energy doesn't exist anymore. So, and then emotions, again, it's, it's the same thing. If, if you, you, you are becoming too emotional, or the opposite, you are not emotional at all, uh, at the end of the day, can have a negative role when you perform. And as well, it's, 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 it's not only because I think he realized and we realized that he was uh, maybe wasting too much energy into that. But I'm, I'm a coach, I think it's important to make a fist. I'm a coach, I think it's important to say, come on and vamos. Self-talk is, is crucial. Of course, maintaining a, a level, you know. And you can see it in the tops. I mean, you, you see, especially I think Roger and Rafa, uh, they are steady, even though the people think that about Rafa is super. But Rafa is steady. And sometimes, yeah, he brings the come on when he really needs it. Um, and that's something that we're working on now with Max, actually, to to make more fist and say more come on sometimes. But yeah, that transition, I think it's... And he needed it. I think he, he really needed it. Yeah. Just to have awareness as well, you know, when you, you, you... I think when you're too high over the bar, too low over the bar, and it's really hard to see things with clear perspective on what's happening in the match. Um, and how you win the point or how you're losing the point. That's really important. And, uh, but yeah, that's something that he discovered by himself. I think he made it, that transition, especially when he started playing the first challengers, you know? I think as well, he has a couple of episodes that some people that he trusts tell him, hey, you're doing maybe a little bit too much. I don't know. Uh, but I think helping, helping a lot. And I think he discovered another Max by doing that transition. That's awesome. So I, I want to delve into, you know, obviously we got to talk with uh, Losha about TAP, but I really am curious just to have you talk about it and explain just how did TAP come about? Like, what, what do you envision TAP to one become? What is the purpose of TAP? Um, and how are you seeing it change athletes' lives, um, you know, both on and off court as of right now? Because this is something, like, when exactly did you start TAP? Uh, I think it was an ITF six, seven years ago. I went with a group of kids from the academy. Um, and we're staying, I think, in Airbnb. I was in uh, Victoria. Uh, a group of kids. Uh, I think we were like six, seven kids. And, and I've been always a coach that when I have one or two players that I can watch the full match, I can write down things, especially related with the mindset of the player. You know, self-talk, body language, uh, writing down things. And I don't know, I remember like we were having dinner and, and uh, there was no communication. You know, it was no communication. Uh, we, are not, we were not interacting that much and I saw them in the phone. So, I don't know, start raising that uh, kind of thinking, how I can help kids you know, to, to really communicate, to, to really express themselves, to really improve not only the work on core, as you mentioned, the off core, and deal with different situations on daily life with a different, uh, with tools at the end of the day to, to really help them and empower them. And I started like this, and Mark Wilde, the owner of the academy, he always gave me the, the opportunity to run the mental part of the, of the academy. I was being on charge, so I started creating like small notebooks uh, where the kids were able to actually write down their their plan for the week, their plan for the matches. Um, that's how it started. Especially seeing from outside what was happening uh, off the court and as, as well see what was happening with the players in the court um, and ways to just to improve, really. Um, but at the end, it, how a player can empower himself and can have the tools to empower himself in the mental aspect and something as well that you can feel that it's something i mentioned before that is not easy with the mental part but you have you have something to go and, and you know that going there you can improve your mental it's it's 
it's funny because you go, you know, you, you go to some of these academies and you see a lot of them, you know, they're obviously working very closely on the tennis and, and even the fitness, they're going to the track, they're going to the gym. But I feel like the mental side oftentimes is neglected. And, and when you compare that with maybe some of the top guys who are actually spending a lot of time and allocating a lot of time towards, you know, their, their mental fitness and working with, you know, various coaches and stuff like that. Why, why do you think, is this because, you know, it's sort of like a newer development or is it just because people are like, you know, we have this much time, we got to focus on the, you know, we, we think tennis and the fitness is more important and let's forget about the mental side. I think as well is, 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 um, I think, well, I don't know, guys, if you remember that that happened to me, that transition, I remember that when I started playing tennis, we were not doing physical preparation at all, at all. Like, uh, yeah, and a, a quick activation, a quick warm up, but we were, I, I wasn't going to the gym uh, that much. And uh, the physical preparation was just coming in uh, as a part of the daily structure of, 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 of our sport discipline. So I think, I think it's, it's, it's an element that is, is, is coming in and we're going to jump in, in that structure. But I think that the, one of the things is we, we, we I think tennis is, is a sport that you want the quick feeling. You want the, the, at the end of the day, you want to improve your technical part, what is really important, especially if you're a beginner, the tactical part, especially when you're developing. And those are skills that you need to play tennis. I mean, you, you, need, you need to know how to hit a ball. But once you, wait, when, once you get to a certain level again, if you want to go to the next step, uh, you're going to go to the next floor, and that, 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 that mental element uh, play, play a big role, play a really big role. Uh, and it's not easy to work with, the, with kids. It's, it's, it's not easy. Because one of the things that we do with kids is, I mean, you need to sit down with yourself and write down about yourself. Tell that to a kid with 12, 14, 16 years old, you know, and try to convince him to do that. Um, especially if you want to implement a good program. If you want to, because one of, I, I think one of the important things that we do, it's, and we see this improving dramatically, is the communication, the channel communication between the player and the coach. And that requires work and more hours, uh, more time with the kid. Uh, and us as a coaches, we need to look at ourselves, you know, what is more important sometimes to keep putting reps or really sit down with your player and analyze what's, what's going on after training. So it's not easy to balance and it's not easy to implement. But it's not easy thing to implement if you are not willing to do it. If, if you believe that the mental part is, for me, is the most important thing, uh, you will implement the problem in any academy, especially if, if the director or or the person that, that, that ran that program believes on that. If, if you, you're stepping in a place that there is lack of belief in that topic, I mean, you're not going to implement it. You know, and it's really important, you know, what we've been discovering, it's, 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 really, it's really important that everyone is in the same mix. Like everyone, it's, it's working together. Every, the communication is going between coaches how the kids are absorbing the, the program, are the kids engaged, it's, it's really important, it's, it's really important. Uh, because it's, it's, it's the mental work is it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do if you're not willing to do it. Um, and that's, I think that's one of the problematics, you know? Uh, the important is, is crucial. And something that Alex mentioned, it's, it's not only on core, it's, it's of course. Especially with nowadays kids, uh, they have multiple things to do every day. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Uh, it's, you know, give them the tool is to be with themselves for a couple of minutes and really reflect about about themselves. You know, um, um, it's crucial. I mean, it's crucial. Um, it takes time for us. It's been taking a long time, guys, to really... We've been trying to implement the, the program in the academy. And we try to do every single year a little bit better. And it's not easy. It's not easy, but they finally it comes from the coaches. But okay, so so I want to I want to delve a little bit more into so tap. I mean, there are a set of tools that you have developed, right? So into meditation, visualization, even things like reading, journaling, 
Um, there's so many different things that go into it. Um, first, can you talk a little bit more about how did you develop the structure? Um, what made you come up with all the things that, that you essentially placed into uh, TAP? Um, and then, yeah, I guess, where do you see this, this going in the next you know, 10 years? Where do you see this in 20 years? How do you hope that this affects athletes, not just in tennis, but just every sport around the world? Well, let's start with TAP, you know, what, what is TAP? Uh, so basically, it's, it's a medical training program that uh, our main goal is to empower athletes to reach their dreams. I think everything is started there. It's really important to dream and dream big and then work towards it. And that's what we try to do with kids. And the way we do it, we use mindfulness and neuroscience tools such as uh, journaling and self-evaluations, breathing works, uh, visualizations, meditations. Um, in order to help the athlete. And as well, we dig into mindset pillars, such as confidence, motivation, adaptability, delivery repetition. We have nine pillars as well, that basically we train them as you train a forehand or a backhand. And yeah, it's a structuring. Uh, we do it in two ways. We have a manual with the kids they can follow up. Uh, I have it right here, the mental manual. Uh, and now we are developing a, a, an app where the kids basically they prepare the week. They prepare, they prepare not only the tactical, technical skills that they are working with their coaches, as well the mental skills that they are working with us. Uh, in the app and in the manual, they prepare the week, and they, they prepare the day, and they prepare the tools as well that they, they're going to use through the week. And yeah, the idea, what we, we do with TAP at the end of the day, we focus in, in, in really try to dig in two really important components for an athlete in order to perform. Number one is the ability to stay focused. Is basically for how long you can put or maintain your attention in that topic that is important for you or that aspect that you're trying to learn or reinforce. And then recovery. And those, the, the, the recovery, I think, is, is an essential part, not only to be focused as well to learn. Le uh, one of the most important things um, and that's why sleep is so important. It's it, all the skills that we learn, uh, we're trying to learn through the day. The brain is absorbing those skills when we are resting. So basically with all those tools of that way of training that we have with TAP, really dig into those important two components, the ability to stay focused and the ability to recover. Um, yeah, basically what we do, for example, is we prepare a, a plan with the kids every week. We pick a pillar uh, to work on. Uh, we get them the intentions uh, and the exercise to work on them, and then the tools. The tools uh, are crucial. The neuroscience and mindfulness tools plus the manual. Yeah, it must be it must be very difficult, especially now though, because you know you have one side is you're trying to go into mindfulness and into journaling and into things that take focus and attention and you know, real, I mean, it's, it's hard to do those things, you know, and it takes patience and, and a lot of work and discipline. And on the other side though, as we're going through time, you have kids, you know, swiping through to, I mean, TikTok our brains and, are yeah. fried. <laughs> our brains are fried. I can tell you that much. And uh, you know, the younger generation, it's even more so. Um, how are you, I guess, how are you battling this yourself? Like what, how are you trying to push against that? Yeah. And, and also, I guess another part of that question is, is, do you notice a difference between the older athletes and the younger athletes, right? So like the younger athletes that maybe have, do they have maybe a less attention span than maybe some of the older athletes that you're working with? I, I, I find a huge difference, especially in the way they reframe things and the way they communicate. It's impressive. It's impressive. Um, and, and I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's our job. You know, it's, 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 it's my job to do that, you know, to really make them understand what is important empower them to understand what is important and all the benefits that they can get with this, you know. Um, it's to, to, to bring more self-responsibility uh, to me, you know, in order to make them understand that those things are not for me, are for them, and are going to help them. In order, in order to perform in, in any aspect then, not only on core, as we live in school, <laughs> um, I manage stress in a different way because those kids nowadays, they... This world, this world of stress and, and anxiety are all over the place, you know. And sometimes 
they see stress in, in, in two little things and how you manage that and how you can do better the situation that you're facing right now. Um, but yeah, I think it's, 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 up to, it's up to us. It's up to us. You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day if, if the kids, if the kids, they see the, the coach engage and, and they believe in what the coach is saying, they're going to buy into it. They're going to buy into it. They're going to buy into it. And something that Steve just made, determination, at the end of the day, they need to have the determination as well to do it. You know, and you're going to train, and you're going to train any single aspect of your game in order to improve, if you're going to really improve. And that determination as well is in the mental part. That's crucial. That's crucial. Hundred percent, and and so where that to lead into the second question I asked earlier, what where do you see this? Where do you see TAP in, in 10, 15 years? I mean, how do you, you know, in an ideal world, how do you envision this affecting athletes? Uh, you know, not just in tennis, but just in all sports. We want to democratize uh, mental training. We want to make mental training more accessible. Uh, we want to give kids the opportunity to actually to dig in their in their sport discipline, improving the most important element is the mind. Having a a, men, a mental training program that they can they can first of all afford, uh, and they can get a lot of benefits. And I see TAP uh, going really deep, really deep. Uh, we are really ambitious. Um, we we are gonna start releasing uh, in June the the app. Um, uh, we already start moving around different academies here in the, in, in the States, but we, we're going to try to get as many places as we can in order to empower athletes to really behave and, and take action in a different way, with a different mentality. Uh, my main goal at the end of the day is to get to those... I mean, I train in a really small place back home in Spain. I'm not from the, uh, a big town. I'm not from Madrid or Barcelona. I'm from the state uh, It's called uh, Extremadura, back home, and we don't have the resources. I, I want to get to those places. I would love to actually to provide those kids that they don't have the resources in order to, I mean, when I was session with a sports psychologist, that is pretty expensive, uh, to have to have a tool, to have something that they can go into it every day for 15 minutes. Because it's that, 15, 20 minutes a day. And they can go into the phone, not to roll and scroll Instagram and TikTok, to really go to an application where they are dealing with themselves and they are improving themselves. That's, that's my main goal. My main goal is that. Um, of course, I have the opportunity now to work with the pro athletes and college players, and, and that's amazing. But I want to reach uh, as many kids as possible, and especially the ones that they cannot afford this kind of, of training, for sure. Well, it's interesting for me because I know, obviously, seeing the effect it had on, on, on Losha, just it, it completely changed his life. Um, and then also I, I was talking to one of my best friends, another one of my best friends, Alistair Gray, uh, who's currently on the pro tour. And I was talking to him about, I was like, I was like, you got to meet this Juanjo guy. Like, have a couple, I was have like, you got to learn about tap. Already. We have a couple of conversations. I, I know he told me, he told me, but, but I was like, you got to learn about tap. I mean, cause it, it's, you know, it's something that athletes really do need. There's a, a serious demand oh, yeah. for it. Yeah. It is, it is not, you know especially tennis, like tennis is an individual sport. There's so much pressure. There's so much, it's an, it's, there's no breaks. You're all see. It's like, you know, 24 seven, essentially like all seasons of the year. I mean, even when there's off season, you're training and you're trying to get better, you know, and you can't, you can't just stop and take a breather. And so it's so cool to see that they're, that you're developing this program that is able to, you know, help athletes, you know, deal, just discover themselves, improve themselves as individuals, and then also, um, you know, perform better. So I think it's, it's such a cool thing. I'm, re I'm really excited to see what, what happens, you know, and, and where you take this thing, because I, I think that it can, it can seriously change um, a lot of, not just tennis players' lives, but just, yeah, just it can change athletes, just sports, yeah. you know? It's also amazing how you're able to do this while being a full-time coach and and then managing your responsibilities as well with your academies like it's like how do you do this in 24 hours like i'm, I'm, I'm like do you, you sleep yeah do you sleep <laughs> do you recover do That's you the recover yeah. <laughs> but i tell you something eh? the last I, I i'm back in california i'm being on, on the road for four or five weeks with max and i'm gonna be honest with you guys eh? to adapt again here it took me like three days like three days again to get some momentum but and yeah. I do it because I love it, and that's it, you know. And uh, I think if you structure yourself and you manage uh, 
you're gonna be able to manage your time. I think that's really important, you know, um, uh, and really prioritize what are, what are the important things for you to do. Uh, um, yeah, sometimes it's, it's complicated, but well, it, it has to be complicated. The problem is if when it's complicated, we stop doing things. I know. I mean, it's we you're gonna keep doing. Um, yeah, uh, just finding time and putting uh, and putting the effort. Yeah. Well, Juanco, thank you so much for, for your time. Uh, to, something that you didn't know is, you know, we kind of created all these technical difficulties today because we wanted an excuse for you to come back on the podcast yeah. so we could talk even more with you. Um, but uh, no, but thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Um, it, it, it's been it, it's been really amazing. And now, guys, for all, for all of our viewers that uh, want to develop your mental game, you have the perfect tool for it, and that tool is called TAP. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so we keep getting real deal guests like Wonko here. And uh, stay healthy, stay happy. And as always, just slap. Peace.